Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are going to look at the deadliest deliberate loss of life in a single incident in South Korean peacetime history, the Daegu subway fire committed by Kim Dae Han. Born in 1947, Kim was a taxi driver in Daegu, the fourth biggest city in South Korea. He suffered from a stroke in 2001 which left him paralysed and unemployed. He felt embittered towards society, dissatisfied with the medical treatment, and expressed sentiments of violence and depression. Suicidal, he wanted to kill himself, but elected to do so in a crowded area with the aim of taking others out with him. Daegu's subway system currently has three lines, one of which is a monorail, covering 89 stations and an area of 81.2 kilometres. It was opened on the 26th of November 1997, with Line 1 the only line until 2005, and trains running 312 times per weekday. Kim boarded train 1079 on Line 1 at Ban Waldang Station on the 18th of February 2003 at 9.53am, with a train driven by 31-year-old Choi John Hwan. Upon boarding, he began fumbling with cartons in his bag and a cigarette lighter, and with fellow passengers alerted and struggling vigorously to contain Kim, one of Kim's cartons spilled and its liquid contents caught fire as the train pulled into Jungang No Station, with the fire spreading into the station. With his back and legs on fire, Kim escaped from train 1079 with six carriages on fire in the space of just two minutes. Choi John Hwan failed to notify railway officials immediately, with train 1080 operator Koi Sang Yol advising him to proceed with caution. Train 1080 arrived at Jungang No Station and stopped alongside train 1079 four minutes later. An automatic fire detector shut down the power supply to both trains. Having made free announcements to passengers, driver of train 1080, Choi Sang Yoi, advised passengers to run somewhere else, go up, opened the door, and fled. However, he took the master key on the train with him. This shut down the onboard train batteries that powered the doors and sealed passengers inside, killing 79 people. With inadequate communication between trains and insufficient equipment on trains, the disaster quickly became a scene of complete carnage. The subway trains were not equipped with fire extinguishers, and the stations lacked sprinklers and emergency lighting. Furthermore, smoke quickly engulfed Jungang No Station, and many died from asphyxiation while looking for exits, with emergency ventilation systems inadequate. While the first fire was extinguished at 1.38pm, emergency personnel were unable to enter the station until approximately 5pm due to the toxicity of the smoke. Fleeing to a hospital for treatment for his burns, Kim was arrested on February 26, 2003. The incident caused 192 deaths with 151 non-fatal injuries, including those of Kim. A total of six people could initially not be identified, with three discovered using DNA, and one person's possessions identified, but their remains were never identified. As the incident occurred in the morning rush hour, the majority of the victims were students or shop workers, with Daegu's department stores opening at 10.30am. The event prompted immense anger in South Korea, Chang Sang Yol and Chang Jong Hwan were sentenced to five and four years in prison, respectively, on the 7th of August 2003 in Daegu District Court. Two other officials were sentenced to three years in jail, and three other officials given suspended sentences. Kim survived his failed suicide attempt and was sentenced to life imprisonment on the 6th of August 2003. While he appeared to express remorse of the killings, survivors and family members of the dead expressed anger that he was not given the death penalty. Either way, Kim's wish for death was answered, 
and he died from chronic illnesses in Jinju Prison on the 31st of August 2004, where he was receiving medical treatment. Survivors of the incident continue to suffer with physical trauma as well as PTSD and other mental health trauma. In 2013, on the 10th anniversary of a disaster, and nine years after the perpetrator Kim had died, 60 survivors were still in medical treatment and 66 were disabled. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy and be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.